The topic of space travel has been in the news a lot, thanks in part to those billionaires, Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, and their personal missions. But we wanted to talk to a man who just made history at NASA. Victor Glover is his name, the first black astronaut to live aboard the International Space Station for an extended mission. Yep, uh, the brother was in space for a long time, six months, and he's back on Earth right now. He joins us live, uh, probably still feeling a little weightless. Uh, thanks for joining us here, and welcome to Start Your Day, Mr. Glover. We appreciate it. Uh, Richard Branson, the billionaire. Good morning. Um, technically, he just came back from space. Uh, what did you think about his trip? Because not exactly like yours. You know, it's not like mine, but it's it, that's not what this is about. You know, all space is good, and so I'm excited for he, but especially, I'm excited for him, but especially the rest of the crew, the folks who had not been uh, on a mission like that, that were able to receive astronaut wings. Uh, my colleague, Chris Hadfield, pinned astronaut wings on a few of the folks that were in the crew, and so it was an exciting day. Wow. And uh, congratulations to all of the folks that made that possible. Right. Well, you did a lot more preparation than they did to prepare for your mission. So talk to me a little <laughs> about what went into your preparation to spend a, a half a year. That's unthinkable in space. And was it everything you thought it was going to be? You know, it was it was it was all that and then some it was everything I wanted and, and a few things more. And so I got everything I wanted out of the mission. Training is about three years before the mission. And, you know, we, we prepare for the spacewalks training in our large pool, the neutral buoyancy lab. Uh, we fly our high performance mm -hmm. aircraft to work on teamwork and decision making. We, we practice our robotics to uh, our mission had a, a robotic capture of a, of a cargo spacecraft. Uh, and then there's tons of science and maintenance that we do on board as a crew, keeping the space station, which has been up there for over 20 years, keeping it flying and operating uh, at the highest levels wow. of efficiency, running hundreds of experiments at any one time. And so the training leading up to it was actually, uh, the only thing more fun than that training was actually flying in space. Mm. Wow. And we were just looking at some some of the pictures and the images, the video from up there. And you all really depend on one another, the teamwork. But I want to know what a typical day is like for you up there when you get up, uh, when you sleep, the food. Is it seasoned properly? You know, OK, yes, okay. All Six right. Months. So, yes, food okay. is very important. We'll, we'll start with food. Okay, the food was actually really great. And I was a part of a, a research experiment called Food Physiology that looked at how we can uh, increase this certain macro, macronutrients to improve uh, immune function as well as just the crew's overall well-being. And so I was able hmm. to have really great food. And we have a we have a seafood gumbo up there that I will have to say for, for oh, living wow. in space, it was actually really good gumbo. Um, a wow. typical day, it's hard to, to summarize one day because really you have to look at a week, almost even two weeks to see, you know, what typical operations. But if you're not doing spacewalks, you know, a typical day, we start the day at 7.30 in the morning with a morning conference and we end the day with an evening conference at 7.30. The 12 hours in between is scheduled to a five minute block. So in, you know, the fidelity is down to five minute increments where they schedule your maintenance, your midday meal, your exercise. Uh, and so every day we're given two and a half hours a day, two and a half hours where we can exercise and then perform the hygiene to clean up afterward. Uh, that's one of the things I enjoyed the most. Uh, but you may be you may be turning wrenches and fixing a machine, you know, pick, pulling a piece out of one box yeah. and putting in a replacement to, to fix it. You may be studying for another experiment or, or working on another experiment or working with a crewmate uh, with your hands in the glove box to you know, change out the, the fluids in some cell culture. And you, you could be doing any number of things on any given day. And that's why an average day doesn't really exist, but over two weeks, you can really see what the crew, the, the, the hum, the, the drum beat of. You guys were doing amazing yeah, work up there. It was exciting yeah. to see it as well when it was happening. But can you describe the sensation of weightlessness when you're walking in space? And then how long did it take you to get your footing again once you were on Earth to just feel back to normal? Yes, uh, yeah. great question. So being in, in low Earth orbit and experiencing microgravity, I haven't found a really good way to describe it. But I, I, I said this hmm. to people, and I think this, this resonates with folks. Imagine your your best dream about flying. I think most people have those flying dreams, or at least used to when we were kids. And imagine if you could actually live that. I woke up in the morning and I was weightless and I was floating around. I went to bed at night still weightless. And so it was like living a dream of flying. Uh, it's hard to describe other than that because it's not like swimming in a pool. 
even in a pool, if you turn upside down, the blood still rushes to your head. And so being in, in, mm -hmm. in microgravity, I could spin in every direction. If I close my eyes, I wouldn't know which way is up. It was truly an amazing feeling. And, 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 and next to the crew and the great times that we had up there working together, it's one of the things that I missed the most about the space station. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the, the being weightless uh, is, is, was truly an amazing experience. And no matter how much you ate, you were still weightless. <laughs> I mean, that's a girl's dream. Uh, but we do, we got to ask you this, because you got a special call from the vice president. And, you know, here on Earth, we sometimes have these annoying delays, right? We're hearing one another talking over the, in all seriousness, did you have that? But how much did the call from Vice President Harris mean to you? Wow. That was a really profound day for a lot of reasons. So I got to speak to her and, and some of my crewmates also were able to speak to her. And I was just off camera while, while Shannon and Kate Rubens were speaking with her. And the, the mm. overwhelming feeling that I got was just mutual appreciation. We were so excited for the, this administration and what they were doing and their support for what yeah. we were doing. Uh, but it was really amazing to see, to, to hear in, in, in Vice President, Mad, the Madam Vice President's voice, how much she was excited about the science and the technology development that we were uh, conducting in space. And it was just really neat to see that mutual respect. And, uh, and, and, you know, we talked about this mission and the importance of this mission. And it was really amazing to, I, I said to her something that I read uh, in her bio that, you know, while being the first at something can seem special, it's more important to not be the last. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, that, yeah. that mutual Amen. sense of, of uh, understanding uh, what we're doing and why uh, it was just really great to feel. I think the whole crew experienced that. Well, you have millions of kids mm -hmm. looking up to you and all the work you do. But before you yes, go, we sir. only have a few seconds left. I want to know, what did you miss the most about Earth? And now that you're back, what do you miss the most about space? I was going to say food, but you had gumbo there, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the food was actually great. You know, I, I missed my family the, mm. the most. That was what I missed the most, yeah. and so it was great to be back. And now that I'm on Earth, um, you know, I, I don't really have a lot of longings now. I'm with my family. I feel great again. I'm back to, I've got my land legs back. It took about a good two weeks to, to feel really solid. Wow. Um, and, and so I'm really content. I'm happy where things are, and I'm really happy that people are, are getting healthy and, and the world is getting back to some sense of normalcy. So I am, I am exactly mm -hmm. where I need to be. I love that you're exactly where yeah. you need to be here and in history. Me Thank too. you so much for all the work you continue yeah. to do. Victor Glover, so the great. first black astronaut to live on board the <laughs> ISS. Thank you for starting your day with us here on Earth. <laughs> Thanks for having me.